From a filmmaking sense, I don't think there's anything that controversial about using AI tools prior to these tools existing. There's no way we could have done a two minute animation considering how much detail there was, the budget we had in the timeline with the number of people. And so simply the project just wouldn't have existed. So it was kind of a miracle that it actually happened at all. Hi, I'm Paul Trillo. I'm a filmmaker, director, and artist. We're at the Art Class Studio in Los Angeles where we worked on the GoFundMe campaign for Help Changes Everything. I think in my work I'm always trying to create a visual that I personally haven't seen before. And in order to find visuals that haven't existed before, a lot of the time you have to see what technology is out there. The first AI experiment I did was a recreation of a shot I did in a short film that involved stop motion. I just got access to Dolly, and I was excited to play with Dolly, not because it allows you to create an image from the ground up, but because you can manipulate your own images. So there's a function called inpainting, which allows you to take an image and then erase part of it and then replace what's inside there. And I shot a video of my hand, erased what was in the palm of my hand, and replaced it with 100 different objects. No one at the time had used Dolly as a stop motion tool. It had always been kind of just as a way of generating images from scratch. And that's when I knew it could be used as a visual effects and animation tool. OpenAI had saw it and they didn't even realize that their technology could kind of be used in this way. It was done very frame by frame. So they kind of encouraged me to keep pursuing stuff. So that was sort of my gateway into this weird rabbit hole of AI was, was these kind of small one-off experiments. I didn't really let any sort of controversy around the tool stop me from exploring because the way I was using it was really manipulating my own footage, my own source material. I saw it as a really underutilized tool that could expand how independent creators could approach visual effects in a way that just wasn't possible before. So I directed this piece for GoFundMe called Help Changes Everything. The project evolved out of real GoFundMe campaigns where you see how one donation, two donations, multiple donations can transform someone's life. The agency had built the idea of AI into the concept where it was supposed to be an AI generated mural. But I was wondering, well, what if the mural came to life? What if the people actually moved? What if the camera could actually transition between each of these environments? That was kind of my draw into the project, was really, could we create an AI animated film that has that level of control? So I've created a few examples to see for myself if what I was pitching was even doable, because there weren't really any tutorials or anything to reference. Using Dolly and Stable Diffusion, I created a handful of storyboard frames or concept art found a composition I liked, expanded that image into like a larger environment, and then broke it up into 3D layers, and then put the uh, burning building in the shot and flew the camera into it. And then I ran that through AI one more time to make it feel like each frame was painted individually. When GoFundMe saw this, this is when they gave us the full green light of like, oh, this, this could actually work. It was exciting when this test worked, but it was also a bit of a burden uh, knowing how much work was, was ahead of us prior to these tools existing. The development time you would have needed to design all these environments and to hone in on the aesthetic, just that would have taken a few months. We had to shoot, edit, and animate within five weeks. It was critical to have real actors in this to give this AI-driven animation some humanity. We shot in a very simple like white psych studio and we actually had real camera motion tracking the actors on the stage and it allowed us to create something that was animated without actually having to like animate a 3D rig. We could actually have the person be the animation. 
And then from there, we took the white psych footage of actors. We used AI to rotoscope them. So we no longer have to shoot green screen, which is nice. Then we run them through stable diffusion image to image process that takes them from a video asset to a animated asset. This is not a painterly style you could achieve with just like Photoshop. It's actually reimagining each frame. We're talking about days of work that can happen in five to 10 seconds. And then we take that newly animated video footage of an actor and place that in the 3D environment that we designed. And then we can create our camera move, we can create our transitions, and we can kind of like lay that out on a timeline. So after we run it through Stable Diffusion, one last time, then we color correct it, add some film grain, drop the frame rate down to 10 frames a second so it has this sort of more handmade quality than your typical AI animation. The reason I'm excited about AI hasn't really changed since the beginning, and it was always really to empower independent filmmakers. I think animation is gonna explode, and I believe in this project as sort of an example of that, but I believe that the traditional animation skills are still needed, but there's a lot of tedious things that are done in animation that can be expedited and made more efficient. Having a team of people, including myself, that already knew how to move the camera in the computer or how to make papers kind of fly through the screen, all those skills still applied. We were just finding a new aesthetic and a faster way to generate the assets that we were using. So the people that have the more traditional skill sets have the most to gain when it comes to using these AI tools. AI is a shortcut for some things, but not all things and you still have to have an eye for what you're doing. So it's really about enabling independent creators to kind of let their imagination flourish and not be restrained by any sort of budget or anything. Now it's really, you're just kind of restrained by your imagination. <laughs>